This is the Amp Hour Podcast, recorded March 21st, 2011. Episode 35, The Ternary Tussle. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble from Chris Gamble's Analog Life. And I'm Jerry Ellsworth taking over the stream today. What? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Jerry? A pirate. <laughs> Jerry Ellsworth. Who, who opened the door and let you in? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, stray. He You're just, everywhere. Stray. Stray now. Yeah, yeah, she is everywhere. Oh, Nowhere. Goodness gracious. <laughs> is nothing sacred? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Welcome, Jerry. Uh, well, welcome, thank Jerry. You for Good to I'll talk extend, to you. Finally, extend some niceties, I suppose. Right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, Gotta our be first courteous uh, with you being a girl and all. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You Sorry. better watch out after what happened this week. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to yeah. get into that. Yeah, I, we will. I want to talk we? about that. There's Dish a couple things alert. in that. Yeah. So we'll yeah we'll get into that. We should mention first that uh, we're recording on Skype today, so if it cuts out at all or we sound crazy like with pauses between each other, uh, yep. we're, uh, we're trying something new to try and incorporate guests we want to accommodate, so that's why because we're Because we Skype. tried Google Talk and it just failed, didn't it? We couldn't yeah. all join yeah. up together, so yeah, yep. oops. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll, uh, well, we'll see how it works. maybe we're just not smart enough to figure <laughs> out how it works. I don't know. We're just mm. Luddites when it comes to this sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, Skype. Skype works for now. Yeah. Well, we so are it's... electronics nerds, not computer penguin nerds, right? Right. Well, at well, least I'm not. Oh, yeah. no. Okay. No? No? I can't. I need my idiot's guide to see programming anytime I try to do coding. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, you, you heard it here first. That's right. right. I, I didn't know that either. <laughs> Assembly language, that's about it for me. Really? Oh. oh, really? Well, there you go. I yeah. said it's weak to non-existent. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I just I came in afterwards. I do C, and that's it. So I started with assembly on micros and uh, PCs, and then I saw the light. And mm. uh, really high-level languages were the really as I've high, done like... a rant on. And then I got abused by all the assembly language diehards who oh, yeah. just you know ah. Oh, God, they really didn't like me slagging off against assembly language. Mm-hmm. You slacker. Yeah. They, they talk about just like <laughs> right. space, space constraints, power constraints, all that other stuff, and, yeah, and especially all that for embedded. Stuff, but, no. but like all, for embedded, all your programming needs to be done in the inter- interrupt service routine. <laughs> right. That's where it all belongs. Right. right. <laughs> but when the when the difference between a micro with one k of memory and a micro with eight k of memory is like twenty cents these days, it's like, yeah. oh, God, you know, why do you bother? Really, it's well, just if you only choose know a bigger assembly, micro, you know. That might be why. If you're really <laughs> desperate, yeah, but oh, I don't know. Well, and Jerry does. It's... You do toy stuff too, so that that twenty cents does matter, right? For oh, you, for oh stuff. big yeah. time, big yeah. time. Yeah, you're yeah. lucky to get anything. I've had machines that I had to program on that didn't even have RAM. You only had a stack that was eight deep. Wow. Bad. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's tight. <laughs> yeah. I've uh, I've never done anything. I've never done any kind of projects that was that cost constrained. So that would be a definitely new challenge for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it opens a whole different world, really. I mean, if you're used to designing products and then you come along and they say, well, you know, you're limited to this and you can't put in an extra resistor because it's going to cost 0.01 cents. And, you know, it, it really adds a lot of complexity to the design process. So, mm-hmm. But it's a lot, of a lot fun of people, too. Well, yeah. it can be. Yeah, I've done that. And it's, yeah, it's good. Uh, the toy industry is like that. And it's the only place that I've ever been like, patted on the back and like good job jerry for cost reducing something you know everywhere huh. else it's kind of time to market but there they actually yeah. care about saving a few pennies here and there and if you can do something elegant and kind of hacky you know they love you for it now tell me when you try and get out of that mode so say you're doing a toy design then you go off and you do something like real fancy and, and high level then is it hard to get out of that mindset where do people like come up to you and say come on get moving we need to get this we need to get this stuff out the door like is it if- like that or it's a big problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I moved mm. on to doing some big chip designs, and you know I'm still in that mindset trying to optimize everything, and they're all about just grinding out as much RTL and code as possible. Huh. And yeah, uh, you know, in the end, in reality, 
um, it always comes back and bites you in the butt if you don't um, think about your design first and try to do it elegantly. You know, it's oh yeah. You know, up front Absolutely. you can make it look like you're getting a lot of progress done, but when it comes down to verifying all this sloppy code that you throw out there, RTL I should say, um, and it becomes like this steak, a bad steak. You chew on it, but you can just never, <laughs> you can never, never get it down because. There's just too much spaghetti code in it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it I'll... wouldn't wouldn't be the first time that I've gone through and actually had to throw it all out and start again because oh, you know yeah. a, a lot of enough foot thought wasn't put in up front because we we're too busy trying to just get something up yeah. and running for a you know for a, a first a demo or something like that and then we figured well that's just totally the wrong direction we can't you know if we try and run with that we're just going to fail. We just have for, to start here again. Here in the and- states, in the states, there's this consumer electronics show, and for whatever reason, all these chip companies always want to go out there and show off their chip at this this show. So it's always through your Christmas time, you're doing this dog and pony show just to get ready for CES, and it's all throwaway <laughs> yeah. code. Yeah. But the managers always think that you can take this uh, dog and pony show code and use it in the actual product. And I don't know how many times we've had to throw that stuff out. I mean, I just came off of a company a couple years ago where all of the engineers were being held up to the standard of this guy that just seemed to be producing like tremendous amounts of RTL. And it's just like, how can we keep up with this guy? He must be like some kind of god. And then six months into the project, they did a code review and found out that he wasn't, he was doing it as behavioral code, not as synthesizable yeah. code. Oh, God. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and <laughs> so anyway, he got, he got scared off and left the company. And then we ended up, you know, having to divide up his module and oh. try to make it synthesizable as well nice. as do our current pr- modules that we were working on. It was terrible. That's a long oh. time to a code review. I mean, you just like let <laughs> someone months? crank on their own for a while, and you're just like, oh, well, uh, but, I guess we'll check at the end. Usual. Yeah. Because companies aren't, uh, you know, if there's not good management, this is one point where management can actually be, you know, a good thing, is to enforce stuff like that and drive things like that. And if you don't have... Good manager. If there's no adult supervision, you know, then uh, <laughs> yeah. this is what happens. You know, the <laughs> the the inmates take over the asylum, and uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, don't get me started on code reviews, though. I mean, it can be like a yeah, double-edged I sword. I yeah. Think. Oh, boring as shit. <laughs> yeah, or or a pissing contest where. Oh really? They, yeah, one engineer is trying to show up the other and. You know, you, you yeah. take this big steaming pile of code in there, and it's like, okay, it's not complete, but we're going to look at it anyway. And then all of a sudden, they start tearing up all these parts of the code that, you know, you tried to tell them ahead of time that it's not complete. So you yeah. spend an hour just screwing around uh, in areas of the code that it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. People do grumble, love grumble, grumble. Put, yeah, put an input in, even, even if it's just to say something, right? Mm-hmm. Much like my comment right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the reviews, there's some people who just never say a thing in, in any me You know, I'm, as it might come as a shock, but I'm the one who always sort of says something in oh. a meeting, even if what? I'm, I, I know. You? where was- Dave Jones. <laughs> Even if I know nothing about it, like I'm dragged into a meeting and I, I haven't even worked on the project. So I'm going, well, why have they dragged me in? But like, I'll be the one doing most of the talking and I'm, you know, I'm thinking to myself, this isn't even my project. Yeah, it is now. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, that's what usually comes out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, who's been doing the most talking? Dave, you seem interested in this. Well, <laughs> oh. Oh, I was just trying to tell you, you're doing it all wrong or, uh, or, yeah. I'll be or you cube. haven't considered this or... Eh. Oops. I wish there was a good way yeah. you could document your gripes so that um, six months down the road when something comes back and, like, screws up the design, you can say, look, I told you so six months ago. Oh. You know, it's so frustrating for me. I you don't warned know, I, me. Yeah. I, I always put in an email if I think, oh, this is going to fail massively, you know, mm-hmm. three or six months down the track. I put in an email, send everyone my concerns, and it sa- it's saved in the you know, the outbox, and I, I drag it back out and say, look, you know, I told you so, and, eh, you know, people just shrug their shoulders and, yeah, whatever. 
Yeah, exactly. So, and they go and make the same mistakes again. Classic. Oh, so, what can you do? You know. Sounds like Dave needs to go into management. That's what I hear. Uh, right. Oh, Bad. Bad times. Yeah. <laughs> There's a mistake waiting to happen. There's a micromanager waiting to happen. Uh, right. <laughs> I would not want oh, Dave good. to be looking over my shoulder in my cube. I wouldn't want Dave in my cube. (laughs) I wouldn't want me in my cube. Yeah, right? (laughs) Exactly. A company that I worked at, we found these extra cubicle parts, and we closed off one of the guy's cubes. Awesome. Put the the extra wall piece in. That's what I would do to keep Dave out. I would just get a ladder and climb over. Nice. Well, it sounds like that's what Dave's doing to his own cube there in the garage at his... uh... At his, uh, his house with the yeah, di- I thought about putting up a wall around it so I have a two and a half square meter uh, <laughs> cubby. Um, <laughs> yeah, padded cell. Basically, it would be padded because I want to acoustically uh, dampen it too, so mm. <laughs> I could go in there and bang against the walls. And uh, <laughs> but I don't know. I th- I thought about going for the full curtain now, so I might have wimped out on the the mm. entire wall idea. It's a bit of a commitment. And, it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if I goof it up and go, well, that was a stupid idea, then, well, I've got this wall there. So, um, What you should do is knock out a wall and extend the extend your entire garage. That's what you should do. Uh, well, that's called the side wall of the ha- the side brick wall of the house, you know, so <laughs> that could be a problem. Brick comes down just as easy as anything else, Dave. Well, yeah. Well, it <laughs> well, has been mentioned, work. but it was vetoed by she who must be obeyed. Oh, yeah. And I'm yeah, not okay. talking about Jerry. <laughs> 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 oh, goodness. All right, let's yeah, get into actually get extended onto extended some real labs. stuff here. Whoa, that was a Skype, a Skype, <laughs> a Skype up right there. A Skype fail because if we all yeah. talk at once, then Skype just cuts out, which is a brilliant thing for like the world's most popular right. uh, chat voiceover <laughs> IP thing. You know, it's unbelievable. So, so. What were you guys saying? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was saying that yes, we should actually get onto some real stuff on today's show that's actually on the list. And, and what did Jerry say? I said, I don't object to any kind of lab expansion ever. Oh, that's right. Everyone should right. have bigger labs. There we go. Yeah. You, well, okay. You heard Can it you here first. Can you please call my wife and tell Yeah, right. <laughs> Send- <laughs> but I do second. We should uh, cover some stuff. All right, let's get into some shout-outs. Uh, first up, we got Jeremy, and he finished his Arduino videos. Jeremy so, Blum. Yep. Yeah. He was doing videos for Element 14, and he ran through a really good good set of tutorials. I'm, I think he might pick it back up with other types of microcontrollers, but if, if people hadn't seen those, those are really really pretty good videos. So, I, like I, I only saw the first one or two, I think. So, yeah. But anyway, great job, Jeremy. Yeah. And uh, second up is Electronic Stack Exchange. So we've talked about that on here before. They got a facelift. They are actually... At first, they were chip... Oh, what were they before? Chiphacker.com? And they got pulled into the Stack Exchange, uh, the Joel Spolsky, that whole, you know... That's the the thing that you keep crapping on about. Yeah, the Stack Exchange concept. Yeah, crap. You love that, don't you? I love it. It's such... All right, so I I like forums. I think they're great, but I I don't think anyone's gotten it right. I I think that they got it right. That's why I like it. And uh, because you can respond to a question, and then you can have people add notes on to that question. I just... I think the format is spot on that's why and basically right. today they got a they released a new just look to it basically so same 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 great flavor new look or whatever whatever that saying is <laughs> <laughs> same same shit different smell is that the <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the common saying here oh, yeah. okay <laughs> i'm not sure if it's re- relevant but sorry i just threw that one in that couldn't one, help myself that's for sure right yeah yep. yeah <laughs> Yeah, so people- that that ties into the whole project thing, you know, when you're doing a project and you're making the same mistakes as before and, you know, mm-hmm. it's the same shit, different smell. Yep. Sorry. Nice. I- no, no, it's, that's <laughs> a good one. I like it. That's another good right. Auss- Aussieism. Yeah. Aussieism. Well, Jerry used, and I, when we were chatting before the show, what was no it worries. you said, Jerry? No worries. No worries. She- oh, that's not Aussie. Come she on. threw in a no worries. I think no, Dave's just uh, claiming all these phrases. Is yeah, right. Oh, I, Australians hey guys, always claim everything, guys, check, especially check, everything New Zealand. Check out this new word. It's the. The. <laughs> That's ours. <laughs> yeah. D- dibs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Ameri- Yanks are just as bad. 
Oh yeah, well everything Yank, else Yanks belongs to us. Yanks think the world revolves around America. <laughs> Come on. There we go. <laughs> I'm a citizen of the world, Dave. <laughs> right. <laughs> but right. Yeah, no, no but, worries. That's ours. Okay. That is ours. It's got to be. At least right. we have fixin' two. I'm fixin' two. Oh, I'm F- never heard of that one. <laughs> it's a southern. Yeah. Uh, Right. Like, I'm fixing to go work on some electronics, that that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, that's a new one for me. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, learn something new every day here on the Amp Hour. Yep, cultural <laughs> education. Right. <sighs> Although I am being, I am getting ganged up on here, you know, on, on this show. Too oh, yanked. we haven't even started I mean, yet. Wait, wait until we get into printable electronics, Dave. <laughs> right. Ooh, yes. <laughs> and I'm being and I'm being attacked from both sides, east and west coast. That's well, that's all. Oh, well, you're kind east of you. sort of. Yeah, yeah, I'm in and, the middle. And as soon as my Twitter trolls get in here and start uh, no. going after you guys, yeah, right. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. <laughs> let's talk about your Twitter trolls and the and the the bus fiasco. Oh boy, oh, the bus yes. fiasco. <laughs> What's the status of that now? I mean, we've got a, we've seen a lot of coverage of the, the whole okay, thing. Okay, well, to, to give some background, right? Um, Portland, Oregon, um, the buses have been running over pedestrians. So <laughs> a year later, they did. <laughs> it's bad. I mean, they're running over pedestrians that are in the crosswalk in the right of way. So instead of well, okay, I shouldn't say instead of, but they decided in addition to training their bus drivers not to do that. <laughs> They're adding these devices to the buses that say, the bus is turning, the bus is turning, when it goes through the intersection at 100 <laughs> decibels. It's pure noise pollution. And that really bugs me because I used to live on a bus line. And oh, yeah. it would mm-hmm. start early in the morning and go way late into the night, and you would hear the announcement for the next bus stop, which is probably 100 decibels also. Did you uh, live on a corner? Is that why? Yes, right <laughs> at a bus bad, stop. right? Yeah. And and they would the actually beeping. announce the next bus stop, would they? Yeah. Real what outside the bus there would be an announcement. Or when the doors would open you would hear it, I think. Oh right, I, okay, you would hear that. Got it. That sucks. Um, yeah, oh. it'd wake me up all the time. Well anyway, so this device that they're installing costs four thousand six hundred, almost five thousand dollars to all it is is this voice chip that says the bus is turning. So I got a, a hair sideways and got all upset about this. So I made a video kind of mocking it, and I prototyped up a very simple circuit that does the exact same thing with some of my toy chips that I had left over here, just a chip that plays back an audio um, playback. And I hooked it to this uh, toy steering wheel, which I, I helped design, and I just showed how I could do it for $10. And I put this up onto the web, and it got a little bit of press, and people thought it was kind of funny because I did my little paper animation stuff. And uh, a local newspaper reporter um, picked up on it and did just a little blog about it. And then this, it gets crazy. All of a sudden, I saw this post on the, the comments, this, the sexist co- comment that said, You've just set women back a hundred years. Years, a yeah. <laughs> hundred years for for having an opinion and making this video. And so, I tweeted about it. I'm like, "Ha ha! I've set the set women's progress back a hundred years." And someone on Twitter did a little bit of research and looked at this guy's YouTube channel, and it ends up it's the president or some bigwig in this company that makes this device. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Unbelievable. <laughs> so then everyone's starting to get really riled up about this, and I'm tweeting about it more and just stirring the, the, the pot. And <laughs> you were stirring the pot because I taught you about that as throughout, and it was funny to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and so people are getting – I mean, I get sexist comments all the time. People are really rude out there, but yeah. um, like some executive in this company coming and leaving that on my – my YouTube account was not right. So, of course, I sent my emails off to the company and said this wasn't right, and a lot of other people did. Well, this reporter that had blogged about this was kind of following the drama of this this guy, this Peter guy. So Peter he called- Bartek. Let's name him. Come on. Oh, yeah. Name and shame. <laughs> Even if Jerry won't, I will. Peter Bartek, <laughs> and the company is ProTran1. There you go. And so they... they um, so this reporter called him directly and got him on the phone, and he's like, what? What? I don't know what you're talking about. My 
YouTube account must have been hacked. Totally mm. my ass. <laughs> totally mm-hmm. bogus because I was having this dialogue with him on the YouTube comments because, and he was coming back saying that, well, this this system was designed by a woman, like. <laughs> He, he, knew, he knew an awful... One of my just... best friends is a woman. <laughs> it's like that, right? I mean, like, that's what he's saying. Like, I'm supposed to have some kind of vaginal loyalty or something because it was designed by... <laughs> that's the first on, uh, on the end of the hour, week. Huh? Word of the week. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Vaginal loyalty. You heard it here first on the amp oh, hour. Boy. Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't cut that out. Leave that in there. That's okay. Oh, we can we start never another kind of stand. I don't even know how to edit stuff, so don't <laughs> no, worry. We, we don't. It's too much work. We're too. Lazy. I would have edited Dave entirely out of the show by now. At this point, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So this okay. This reporter gets him on the phone. He says it's hacked, and the reporter's like, "That's odd. It doesn't seem like it's hacked." And then a couple minutes later, his YouTube account was removed. So this reporter wrote <laughs> another blog about it. And yeah. then, of course, I'm stirring the pot more. I'm like t- retweeting this this blog, and then who yeah. picked it? Who picked it up? Uh, Make Magazine picked it up, and yeah, Ada for, uh, all kinds of. Who was it? it? Was one of the bigger ones picked it, it up? And that really, I think it was w- Boing Boing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was Boing Boing. I think Phil submitted it to Boing Boing or wrote about it or something. Yeah, apparently or it was on, on the Make, front, maybe, and then it went on to Boing Boing, whatever. Apparently, it was on the front page of the Oregonian Sunday too. So nice. It, it's it's still it's still escalating. I I I just got contacted by uh, the guys at Woot, so it may be on Woot. I didn't. Woot, that's a Woot. That's a sales site, isn't it? And that yeah. you, like, I thought that was a conference. Woot. I thought no. Woot dot com is a. Uh, it's like a one deal a day. You can buy whatever they get large lots. Oh, okay. I like, might be I might be mistaken. Okay. I love but, Woot. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I don't know if they have a blog or something that might be going yeah, they up might. there. I don't they know. They might. Maybe they're I, selling like uh audio devices that day and they're they want to like tie it to a blog <laughs> post or something. <laughs> oh, right. Maybe hey, they're you, selling buses. Who knows? Go check out my YouTube channel. It's on there. It's uh yeah. it's uh the name of it is uh Oregon Trail two thousand eleven. Yeah. Which is a very popular video game in the United States, um that dep- depicts the um, traveling from East Coast to West Coast, and oh, all kids right. had to play this in school. Oh, yeah. I played that for oh, sure. Oh, okay. Right. No, I was wondering. <laughs> you have lost Being four on. wagon wheels and an oxen. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the game was so bogus, too. I mean, uh, we all had to play it, and we got, at least I got graded on it. <laughs> you got graded on it? Whoa. Yes, we got, we have really bad school system here in Oregon. <laughs> but, right. Um, the game One is completely sure. random. One thing's for sure, Jerry, you're going to get huge mileage out of this one because people <laughs> love to, uh, especially the papers, they love when these this sort of modern-day sexism type stuff happens. They just eat it up. It so, seems to be popping up a lot of places, too, to be it, honest. It is. Like, you posted this other one, Dave, about... I have. About I have. The, Edmund, the Ed- Edmund Optics. Let's call them out. Yeah. Ed, they're an optical company. They're a huge, like the DigiKey of optics or something. You know, they're yeah. a huge catalog. And their front cover has... I will put up a, a photo of it. Has yeah. this... Uh, there's no way to say it. She's got big boobs, okay? This animated <laughs> superhero girl. Right. Like, with these... I don't know how big these things are, but they'll take your eyes out. Let me tell you. Um, it's just the comic style. <laughs> you know, it's like how, it's it's how comic comics style, are drawn. Yeah, yeah, sort of... Yeah, comic style, and she's, you know, going to save the day by delivering your optical products or something, you know? She's, <laughs> I don't know, hero girl or something. Yeah. I don't know, optical girl. And um, it turns out that it's not the first time they've done it. I'll post a link to one of their uh, previous catalogs as well, where somebody on their blog actually took them to task about their previous yeah. catalog. <laughs> So they have a history of doing this. What is it, the 1970s all over again? Because if you were reading electronics magazines in the 70s, there were like, you know, girls in every second ad. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was even, even into probably the 80s, I think, probably the mid-80s, they might have stopped doing that. I don't know about the US, but it was like that here in, uh, in the Australian mags anyway. So yeah. Well, they certainly haven't stopped uh, doing it at trade shows. I mean, there's booth babes at... Every oh, yeah. electronic trade show. 
that yep. are there just to try to lure the guys in. <laughs> you know, and, I I, mean, I and it works. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Dave, Dave and I have talked about this before, though, and Dave is on the side of booth babes. He likes the booth babes, so I don't, I don't know if he's the best one to be calling out. I mean, it's interesting that they're doing this, and, but uh, Dave did say he liked the booth babes, so I I'm just, I'm just want to be full disclosure here. I don't, for, well, I don't mind I'm that against as much. having them, but if they're there, you know, I'm going to have a look. I'm oh. going to go visit the stand. Okay, I think it's, it's a waste zooming, of time and money. You know, I mean, uh, it is a waste uh, of money for anyway, sure. I, yeah, it is. I, I but agree. But on a more serious note, uh, though, I mean, I, I should state that um, I, I, I get a lot of sexist comments, and it offends me. And yeah. especially when it's, huh. um, it's diminishing my engineering ability just because I'm female. And yeah. I experienced yeah, that, that a lot in my life. Yeah. And around the racetrack, it was really bad. And granted, yeah. a lot of those guys weren't the uh, the brightest out of the bunch. and The most evolved, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe that's sexist in itself right there. But it, it, it's, exactly. evolved. it's yeah. less than electronics, but still, every time I go to a trade show, yeah. um, I, I actually make it a game now. Uh, I'll go up to a booth, and I'll let the salesperson start talking down to me. And they'll be like... So this is an oscilloscope, oh. and, and you use it to measure wave form, you know, and it's all, I'll be like, oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, oh. So what DSP functions does it have? <laughs> Bitch. <Yeah. laughs> and then just watch nice. their face drop when... Uh, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Wow. I would have so much fun with that. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I don't think you would, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, but um, the the flip side of that, being a girl in this industry can actually be a massive advantage too. The true. Mm. I true. mean, I would, I would be surprised if you're not aware that a lot of your success, you do a lot of cool stuff, but it's also a lot of it is because you are a girl, I guess, and people find that really cool. And different. Yeah, I, and, I go um, to a lot of events and I speak to a lot of schools and stuff. And I think there's one thing engineers should pay attention to is standing out in a in a positive way. And yeah. um, for me, it's a little bit yeah. easier. I can put on roller skates and it's like, all right, I'm in a group of 400 guys. So I'll be usually the only girl there on skates. So that's memorable. <laughs> and people yeah. will remember me when it comes time to to do a job interview or... Yep. Um, yep. Absolutely. If, well, you, if you're like just what, another suit in the crowd, you're not going to be remembered. So I think engineers should stand out in some way. Yeah. And, I and totally d- agree. Yeah, Dave, you've talked about that before too. Like it, even when you're in a job interview, when you bring in your your boards and stuff, that's a great way to stand out. You know, hey, I made oh, this. Absolutely. This is, that's. I think that's brilliant. You know. And doing uh, your own stuff on the outside or having your own blog or having your own radio show, or having your own whatever, <laughs> YouTube videos, anything that helps you stand out when you're going for that job interview. Because, yeah, everyone else has got the qualifications. Everyone else has got the experience. You know, what makes you stand out? And uh, I, I know if I'm hiring people, mm-hmm. you know, I will. the people I will get in for the interviews um, are the ones who have, you know, done stuff outside of work who are interesting you know and and dare i say it um if a girl applies i'll get her in because i think that's cool more women in engineering you know um i i would you know i'd love to meet her and find out you know um you know uh, how uh, well not only is she suitable for the job but you know is um you know it bleh. Where am I going here? <laughs> I don't know. I'm painting myself You're in a corner, a and Jerry's going to give me a are. slap down. Yeah, you know, oh, we oh, actually talked about that. Digging. We talked anyway. about that on engineer blogs because there and there was like a big right. controversy about that because you know a lot of a lot of guys feel feel that that ex, you know they they feel like they get passed over because women have you know stand out naturally just because you know they're they're in the they're in the pack right and mm-hmm. just yep. the, just that that one differentiation is there and they felt like. Uh, discriminated against and it's like well maybe but i mean there's so many other things that guys don't realize that women have to put up with in trying yeah, to be in a, in a, a for now d- male dominated field and field and like that that's just kind of the way it is so it's well, not easy but way, guys can work well, around this though i mean it's whether it's just wearing a funny colored shirt or uh bringing <laughs> yeah, your boards could, in yeah yeah i mean that's yep. partly how i busted Having into the electronics hair or something. field Oh. <laughs> great hair. Dave just say great hair. Green hair. Green hair. Green. Oh, okay. 
Wow. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, there's many ways to stand out. But I remember on Twitter there was this, I don't remember her name, but she was a young female engineer or graduate maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, uh, I don't know how we got talking about it, but I said um, that uh, being a, oh, she commented that to me that, oh, it's so hard being a woman in engineering, you know. It's, and, I, and I went, rubbish, it's easy. You've got a massive advantage. Use it. You're female. It's, it's novel. You know, I don't, um, I don't use know. it to your advantage. I don't know about that. I will. I, don't I think. I, uh, I, I'm with Jerry on this one, Dave. Sorry. I, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, no, I, I think there's a natural sort of. I mean, it gets you, know, you in the an, door, but it doesn't. It doesn't help no, you no, when of course. you're in. No, no. Yeah. It's, it's hard That's what to I deal meant. with the pissing yeah. contests that happen in yeah. engineering yeah. and um, if if I come in and I start to take a hard stance on something, mm-hmm. I feel that the guys really take offense to that where i can watch two guys do the exact same <laughs> thing to each other and it's just like ha 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 we're just having our little fight but, <laughs> right so there's there's a different interaction between yeah um male female and, and male male and um that's just how our species are i mean it's you know it's nothing to do with oh i guess so engineering's I I a little bit different like backing but it's down still, a lot it's quite natural I don't know. I just think, yeah, there are some inherent advantages there, and and uh, well, the last thing, well, the last thing I really wanted to see is for some, you know, is for a young female graduate engineer to be so down that oh, I've got to compete against all these men and I've got no hope, and oh, I've got to be like a man, and you know, all that sort of rubbish. I just no. I mean, just being female is. I'm sorry to say it, but it will likely get you. Interviews, um, you know, right, and then but, you've mm-hmm. got to stand out. Of course, it won't get you the job just because you're female. Right. Exactly. And, uh, but Jerry's you know. saying it's past that point. And I think that's the part that would be really tough. I think from- it is. It is tough. I mean, mm. I, I I come in as a contractor a lot, so that also adds a little bit more complexity to um, the interactions. So as a contractor, right. a lot of times you're hired to be the um, superhero to come in and fix some kind of project yeah. that's behind schedule. So everyone's got a chip on their shoulder anyway. Yeah. So I, I find that the first three or four weeks that I'm on a project that I have to do a lot of like... Clean uh, up? Uh, well, <laughs> no, no, just uh, a lot of uh, taking a lot of shit from people. Oh. Um, until in- can, integration into the group, is that what it was more? Like kind of like fitting in and... yeah. Yeah, getting and, into the groove of like code compiling, or whatever. And it is. I feel, and I mean, I don't have any other kind of point of reference to to justify this, but I feel that you know maybe if I was a guy and came in there, I could just come in and just be like super aggressive and say, "This is what we're going to do, and you're going to listen to me." And and you know, trust me, I've tried to do that, and it really backfires badly. Yeah. And I don't know no, if it's a gender thing or not. Because I've never experienced that with the female <laughs> engineers I've worked at. As soon as you open your mouth and say, you know, good things, right, people will listen. That's – you instantly gain respect. I'm surprised it takes, you know, mm. months or something to gain people's respect At in least that weeks. At least weeks. Wow, that's that's surprising. I haven't really encountered that. Um, you know, it's I, – I find, yeah, if you come in and you say the right things and do the right things straight away, then people go, well, okay, she knows what she's doing. And you don't care if they're male or female. No, it's the, it's the defensive mechanism, though, right? Is, is that what I'm hearing, Jerry? Is that like... Right, okay. So, like, you the come natural, in and, and you yeah. slam the table, and they're like, whoa, why is she slamming the table? Whereas if it was a dude, it'd be like, oh, I should yeah. listen. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, On the flip side, I found that that's the same thing with guys. If a guy comes in like me and is, like, really kind of aggressive and will say what they think, um, then, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female, that's going to get a lot of people offside. Hmm. Um so maybe it's just your outspoken nature. Maybe it's not because you're female mm. to, uh, you know, or not entirely because you're female, maybe. Perhaps, I don't know. perhaps. Because I've, I've, I've had exactly the same thing. Um, you know, I've come in and slammed my fist on the table and said, you know, you're doing it wrong. This is how you got to do it and, or et cetera, et cetera. And um, that gets a lot of people offside and instantly I'm, I'm shunned. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, Chris, because I, I said too much. Chris Dave. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> well, I, I don't think 
you know, we're both looking at this from, through our own prism, and I don't think yeah, that we can actually yeah. judge this accurately. You know what um, we need? We, we need, like, a Freaky Friday moment. What's a Freaky Friday moment? Yeah, what? <laughs> what? You guys, the, like, the old, like, Disney movie where, like, they switch bodies for, like, a day? <laughs> You know, like the oh, mind switch right. out. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh man, yeah. I would wreck Dave's body. I would just go out there. I'd be like caving. I'd be jumping off of like oh, big yeah. cliffs. Oh right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine you with a hammer in your hand hitting yourself in the head. I'm not going to use this anymore. <laughs> pop, pop. <laughs> wow. Oh goodness. <laughs> Boy, this is probably going to be the chalk. This one up is the most interesting amp hour ever. <laughs> oh, we'll try and tap it. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait until we get the name for it. Because <laughs> every, oh, yeah. every episode has to have a title. Oh, yeah. We'll work on that. Yeah, Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, so, anyway, my, this guy with the bus, boy, right, if you're bus. listening, Peter... You know, you should have just apologized in the beginning. In the beginning, and said, "Man, I was drunk or I was upset." It would have been over at that point. Mm-hmm. Yep. Instead yeah. of absolutely. Instead so, of you were a douche and you didn't admit it. Exactly. And you just yeah, and you tried to weasel out of it. Yeah. Man, makes you even look like even a bigger douche. So. So nobody, done. <laughs> by the way, nobody buys the my YouTube thing was hacked. And your account shut down. That's just bullshit. Come on. I mean, please. What do you, what do you take us for? Yeah, right. Seriously. Oh, no. My wallet was stolen, dear. And uh, <laughs> someone went to the strip club on my tab. Uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> I have no idea what yeah. <laughs> that, those what purchases? that credit card No, bill is. those were not mine. <laughs> <laughs> someone hacked my oh, YouTube dear. account. <laughs> That's a bit sexist, isn't it, Chris? Sorry, I don't go men, to strip men clubs. Men just Dave. go to strip clubs. And... I don't go to strip clubs. <sighs> Anyways. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, more douches. The Edmund Optics people buy a clue. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. I Dear agree. Idea. Yes. All right. I want to switch gears. I want to talk about Jerry's van. Go for it. <laughs> van? <laughs> Jerry has a van. Yeah. It's gray and it says solar heating on the side. And... <laughs> so I was talking to Jerry yesterday and and I say, Jerry, I want to talk about Japan. And she heard your van and I was actually <laughs> saying Japan. Hey, you can talk about my van if you want. It's fine. <laughs> I have I have no interest in your van, Jerry. I'm Aww. sure it's windowless and creepy. It is. <laughs> is it is it like an A team van? Because the A team van's cool. Okay, it's yeah, it's a Ford, cool. but it's close. It's close, and it has like this right. expanded metal grill between the back area and the front area, so oh, I can God. like abduct people and put them in the back. And, <laughs> nice. And I can I can yell Creepy. through the back like, "Shut up in there! Shut up!" <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Okay. Uh, we learn something new about Jerry every day. Oh, I don't know <laughs> if we want to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, anyway so, what about Japan? What about yeah, Japan? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so there's tons of stuff it going on over there. It hasn't been in the news much. Oh, uh, no, right? Uh, no. I wanted to rant a little bit about the fact that the first article, honestly, the first article I saw was in a tech magazine talking about, oh, well, what about our chip supplies? And it's like, yeah, okay, we understand. You're actually going to have some chip supplies. Everyone's going to have some chip supply problems. But there was just a 9.0 magnitude earthquake. You think you could hold off on maybe like a day, two days? Like, I don't get why that's the first thing out of their friggin' mouths. Oh, because they're a niche content. Nope. They're niche content magazines. and Not excusable. (laughs) Ah, you know, I... (sighs) I don't really care people about People want to know. Thing. I mean, yeah, business that's goes people on. People want to know straight away. In the As meantime, it, yes, yes, but not the first thing. it didn't cross your mind. If you're in the industry and you're yeah. reliant upon, gee, you want to hear from the industry experts, the magazines and the sites you're reading. I don't think they're doing that the, for the electronics people. You know? They're doing that for the investors. And then the first thing they do is, you know, dump all the stocks. Ooh. I, I friggin' hate that stuff. I can't stand that. I that is don't know. The I, first thing out and the first thing that happened was all the stock prices dropped. And it's like, all right, if there weren't enough problems, let's make sure Japan's economy goes in the toilet too. So. Oh, I don't know. I think you're being a bit harsh. I think they oh. should talk about it. You know, everyone knows, yes, it's a tragedy and everything, but... In the meantime, you know, yeah. I mean, I, 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 well, I said, you don't have to give it a couple of days, Grace. I'd want to know up front. You mm-hmm. know, I news is news. I mean, yeah, eh, that, that's not I news. That's that was speculation. It was the first thing out of their mouths. Oh well, the chip. Yeah, fab. but we're talking about billions of dollars. You know, like a um, hundreds of billion dollars worth of industry stuff here. It's important. 
you know, people have to get the facts. They have to talk about it. They have to discuss it. And yeah, I, I think it's important whether or not it happens a week. You know, if it happens a week after, I think that's too late. So why not mm. have it straight away? I disagree. I, I think that's all right. Insensitive. Agree to disagree. All right, Jerry. I, what do you I, think? I, I I don't find a problem with it really. Um, Two to one, Chris. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We're getting six, uh, it isn't, it six isn't guests sensitive, on here from now on. It isn't sensitive, but these trade magazines and trade sites aren't aren't there to be sensitive. It's I ac- will agree with that, but I just hate it was the first thing I... Maybe it's just, I shouldn't read this stuff when, when that kind of news pops up, but it was the first thing I saw, so I hated it. I don't... In the meantime, it's like, yeah, of course this is an issue. I mean, like, you know, Japan is a huge part of the world economy. Then but, why shouldn't they talk about it straight away? It's... <laughs> If, if, if that was the first thing you saw about the Japanese earthquake and tsunami, well, you're reading the wrong newspapers. For your, <laughs> you're reading the wrong things for your news. I mean, well, maybe just a general, too. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> if it I showed up know. on CNN or something, that would be very insensitive because that's not <sighs> their, their demographic they're targeting. Exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, and if something else, I think this was in the notes about manipulating prices. Um, we saw that in the 80s. Um, with memory prices and in the 90s with the epoxy um, shortage and a lot of speculation going on as far as like immediately jacking the price up on on parts. Yeah, but that that was supplier side and that was talking to one another, wasn't it? Where they they said, okay, well, today, this week is it's going to be $4 for a DRAM chip, right? And then the next week they said, okay, 425 and everybody ticked up incrementally so there was no economic pressure. That was a different thing, I thought. No? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's sick. My best friend's girlfriend, cousin. Co- Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think I that's love a, Ferris Bueller. You're right. The, movie. Oh, yeah. I think you're right about the prices, Jerry, but I, I think the, I thought that was a little different because they were actually doing that on purpose. And whereas this, it's just people are stockpiling and jacking up the price just because they can now, as opposed to, it's mm-hmm. like opportunistic well, versus. Welcome, out. welcome to the real world, you know. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what companies do. Yeah. Speaking of the real world, there's a follow up to Tyco oh, last yeah. week. And speaking of, oh. you know, a hole uh, executives. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this, this is brilliant. Tell us about it. So Ryan Barnes wrote in. He actually was listening to last week's episode, and we talked about how Tyco, who is a huge supplier of electronics components, a lot of other stuff, they are now TE Connectivity. And that's they changed their name. We were complaining about it. Why you got to change your name? Well, Ryan wrote in. Maybe it's because of this. Tyco, uh, their top brass, basically all just got indicted from anywhere from fifteen to twenty years in prison <laughs> and like millions of dollars in fines. Mm-hmm. And they because they stole six hundred million dollars. Just embezzled it, or yeah, or they like yeah. gave themselves loans and they forgave them. You know, all the all the kind of it's usual hilarious. dirty tricks. I love it. And they it. got busted for it. Can we have a round of applause, please? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. I love Tyco seeing Tyco is such an odd company. They just go out and acquire yeah. and sell companies so quickly. Yeah. I love like this. A- In the article, they spent $2 million uh, on a toga birthday toga, party toga, for the executive's toga, wife. Toga, 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 toga. <laughs> Brilliant toga, on, on a Mediterranean <laughs> island. <laughs> on a Mediterranean island. And then I'm hanging out with the wrong people. Oh, I know, right? I know. <laughs> we should get them as a sponsor. Jeez, oh, yeah. imagine, the, imagine yeah. the cash we could embezzle. And this oh. week we're giving a giveaway of gold-plated yeah. 555 timers. <laughs> <laughs> and we can record from their $18 million Manhattan apartment with the $6,000 shower curtain. It S- says here in the article, Screw- I could use that as a uh, audio dampener. Screw that. We, can, we should rent like a blimp or like a Zeppelin and record from above the earth. That's what we should do. So, why stop Dude, at $18 million? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Six hundred million bucks. How many guys? Is it two? I think is it two th- guys. Two main Three. ones, and then there's a third one that's not as severe. Right. And uh, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I love white collar cr- criminals getting locked up. I think it's the best thing in the world. I think <laughs> oh, <it's- laughs> they have a quote in there. They said that, or through the lawyer, he said, "We didn't take anything we didn't deserve." <laughs> it's like I can't believe it's. Oh uh, man. It's, it's stuff like that that I think, and I'm like, you know, if that's, like, success, I will be in my basement working on electronics till the day I die because 
screw that. You know, like that is just so jaded and ridiculous. That's how most of them get away with it. That's the sheer arrogance of them. And it takes arrogance to get away oh, yeah. with stuff like this. And most of them do. Most of them get away with it. This is pretty rare yeah. that, that that somebody's actually being jailed for this. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, there's got to be, you know, uh, there's got to be 100 to 1 at least to the number of people that get away with it. Probably 1,000 to 1. Oh, yeah. Oh, Definitely. It's just, yeah. Anyway, sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's just awesome. I love it. Yes. Uh, that, so, that's a win. Winning with a hash. <laughs> oh, I don't Sorry, get, Charlie no, Sheen. No, I'm not getting into that Charlie. stuff. I hate right. that. It's just as bad. <laughs> All right, how about into some other awesome stuff? How about the one right above it, the USB open source USB analyzer? Have you guys heard about this? Oh, I have. That's awesome. I, yep. The way they jump-started that, that project. Did you see their video? I didn't see the video. No, I just I haven't I seen just, the video yet. I've heard. Just, Everyone should I go just look at this video. This, this yeah, we'll, we'll is link it. a way to promote a uh, a startup project. It was funny and straight to the point, and they raised like eight times the amount of money they were asking oh, yeah. for. Yeah, and it's called Open Vizla. Is that how you say it? Open Visula. V- well, uh, vi- Viz- uh, no, I open, V-I-Z-S-L-A. Yeah, open, S-L-A. There's no U in there. Okay. Open, yeah. Vizsla, yeah. V i z s l a. Z. What Z? Yeah, Z. 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 Sorry, that's it, Dave, wow. So. <laughs> but it's great because Yanks. they also sold spots on here for corporate sponsors too, which you know some people might be against that. It, in terms of like, it's just a name on a board. So Altium bought a spot. Boing Boing, Farsight, a couple other that I don't recognize the logos. But it's brilliant. I mean, they and they had great levels. People don't. We've talked about Kickstarter on here before. They yeah. had great levels where you're just getting dev boards you know like as they come out you get the alpha you're the beta tester and and if you donate enough you get all of them you know like you get to actually have feedback in the process so this is how it's done folks check out the project check out the page i can't wait to see it too because this stuff is really expensive i mean like to get a usb analyzer how much did they raise for this project? They were only asking for like eighty-one thousand dollars. Yeah, but, and yeah. they were asking for seventeen thousand five hundred was their goal, yeah. and they got five hundred eighty-four people to back it. Yeah, at at eighty-one thousand, that's yeah. just awesome. Yeah. I love I love Kickstarter in the first place. I think it's great that you can just you know kind of put your money where you really like yeah. something. Like I'd love instead of just buying something, you're supporting the actual people directly you know it's like the difference between going out and handing an artist ten dollars mm. and for a you know a, a mp3 track versus buying it through itunes and and you know paying some portion of that to the artist this is like directly sponsoring that person to do this project yep so ah and the person is bushing um he's the one who originally did the uh Rigol hack oh um, really yeah. and also he was uh he was one of the ones sued by uh sony evil's Insert evil sound um, <laughs> bum, bum, for uh, hacking the uh, PlayStation, uh, hacking the PlayStation or something. Huh. So I, I believe anyway. So, so yeah, good a badass, on at least at the very yep. least. That's awesome. That's why. That's why he goes under the pseudonym Bushing. He now I don't think he ever uses his real name. But uh, right. Yep. That's awesome. <clears throat> Yeah, so we'll link ah, to the uh, Kickstarter page, too. There's a yeah. whole category for technology. There's one for open hardware, one for open software, and then there's just kind of floaters in there, too. And there's a couple other good projects that need some funding, so be sure to click yeah. on over and, and you know fund your favorite ones. Have they fixed that so it can take PayPal now? Last time I tried, I think it was on there, that they had some no, other service. No, it still uses Amazon. Still mm-hmm. uses Amazon, I believe. And, curiously, a friend of mine here in Australia tried to do a Kickstarter project, and apparently... If mm-hmm. you're Australian, you you can't do it ah. uh, for some reason. There's some payment issue or something. I couldn't find anything in the terms and conditions that said you, you know, you you have to be from the US or something. But yeah. I yeah, apparently that's what she told me is that she went through and it wouldn't let them do it if you're from Australia. Something to do with the Amazon payment system or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, crazy. Well, it's kind of so. A, I mean, Kickstarter just in general. I mean, it's kind of like to jerry's point before too it's like it pays to stand out like with that video and the and just the i mean the concept itself is great but that's what's going to get you funding and that's what's going to allow you to do do some cool work so if people are considering it definitely uh spend the time on the upfront that's what's really going to pay off i think yeah there is actually an australian version of um of this site but it's not called kickstarter it's um uh there there is another name for it it'll come to me Okay. Um, but there are ones in in other countries. There are other versions of you know, so it's not the be all end all. Okay. 
Well, we'll hopefully put that in the show notes if you think about it, if you think yep. of what it is. Mm. So speaking of open hardware, uh, there's actually, I saw on the Bugs Lab, Bug Lab's Twitter account, they are talking about setting up another one. So I went to that one last year, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go this year, but it seems like there's another one in the works. What is right. it? The Open Hardware Summit. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm sure. Even though the license is still called Open Source Hardware, <laughs> which right. everyone took me to task on. Right. Jerry, what's your take on that? Is it uh, called Open Source Hardware or Open Hardware? How do you I pronounce it? I have no it? take on it at all. I don't care. Make <laughs> oh, cool shit. There you go. Okay. Make cool shit. There's the <laughs> right. Jerry cool license. Shit. All right. <laughs> yeah. Make a YouTube video. That's, that's your license. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. What else have we got on here? We, we've got about 10 minutes left. 10 minutes? We've been just yapping on with Jerry. All day. It works Sorry. out pretty well. Sorry. This is... Maybe we should do a two hour show. No. <laughs> I, I don't have a comfortable enough chair. I'm sitting on like a piece of wood, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so I have a new segment I wanted to kind of sort of debut. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but I called it Go Gear Go. So for new gear. Because there was uh, two people that uh, kind of showcased some, some fun electronic stuff. I know that Adafruit does their, their Part Finder Friday. And it uh, kind of like that, but not really, because uh, these aren't necessarily parts. The first one being uh, Alan. Uh, so his what's his uh, ham handle? I don't know what it is. V two V K two S V A Y whatever. Uh, Throw your hams out there. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, he actually was. He's been talking about these these like storage boxes for SMD components, and they all link together. And so, hope he doesn't mind me uh, swiping the the link, but uh, they're really cool. I mean, they're just like, they're probably the size of like an American quarter, and you can like snap them all together, and they're really good for storing small parts, basically. So, it's another another storage system for the for the lab. Cool. Yeah, it looks I'm like the lid on those this... will stay closed and uh, seal in little parts, too. They're, it's for medical use, right? Yeah. 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 And there's a great picture nice. of him on his... Uh, TwitPic page of he made uh, a uh, <laughs> a periodic table out of it. He like snapped them all together in, the, in that form. Oh, right. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. And and then we've got these uh, Proto Flex boards. Yes, they are flexible sticker conductive. They're, the, they're conductive stickers basically that break out SMD components to yep. larger pads. But there are stickers, and that was written in about mm. from Dino, and they're really cool looking. I mean, like they're they're are standard. Are they polyamide uh, Capton type? The orangey ones. Yeah, I think they're a Capton. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it looks like, and they mm, have them for nice. you know sticking just onto proto boards or actually even putting them as connector interfaces. Yeah. They're brilliant. I love them. Yeah, they're neat. How much do they cost? Uh, you have to Any, get them. Anyone know? Uh, I saw, oh crap! Where is it? Where to buy? There's a there's a link through through, through Jameco, but I didn't see the the price. I'm guessing not cheap. Oh right, no, yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but they're very cool to have around. Oh you yeah, know, you buy a bunch of them and you just have them on hand when you need them. So yeah, sixty yeah. bucks for a sheet of the of the uh, SOT twenty three breakout or SC seventy breakouts. So, Ouch! All those and breakout of boards are just so expensive. Always, it's frustrating. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. Goes down to 50. And of course it's patented. I'm it, using the quote marks. It's patented. Yeah. Patented. Patented. It's it's okay, that, Dave. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> and there's this ridiculous terms and conditions of sale on the website. If you like there's a menu down the side and if you go click on terms, mm-hmm. there's all these number one is six terms and conditions. Warning, these products are not designed for testing with a level of reliability suitable for use in or connection with surgical implants. Well, <laughs> what, Jesus. It sticks to a person, why not, right? <laughs> Just Critical components in life support systems. Aircraft or vessels. Oh, yeah, that's all the, oh, the lost oh, stuff. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, I hate that crap. I do, too. Oh. I don't, I think the cool, it's a cool idea, though. I, hope, I wish they weren't so expensive, but I'm sure they'll come down eventually. And they're kind of printed looking. What do you think? Mm, do them at home? Maybe. <laughs> dreaming people dreaming <laughs> Dave 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 ah <sighs> did we uh when will you learn I don't know <laughs> there's actually I don't know if I mentioned it but yeah there's a whole conference in printable electronics 
Did of course I- there is. Printable electronics is a big industry. It's not going to happen in the damn home. <laughs> People. <laughs> Jerry, come on. We've got to gang up on him. This is why you're on the show. Oh, oh uh, <laughs> yes, it will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's Take the that, best Dave. I can do. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll have to come back to I think my five points I've put in the previous uh, blog rant on this, which nobody has ever come back and questioned because they can't because I am right. What? Yes. Where's this? Where's Who this five points? This? It, we, <laughs> I don't it even was know in about the this. Comments section. Where? Of where? The previous blog. Really? Yeah, where it's been conveniently uh, <laughs> squelched, conveniently lost in the ether, has it? <laughs> I don't. I don't see it, but which which, which one is mean the last time we talked about? Is that what you mean? I, I think it was the first time that the oh, really you know the oh. big half hour discussion happened on it, and then yeah, I, I put all the points up there, and right. I'm just yes, going to have to do it to prove you wrong, aren't I? Awesome, please! I I sounds encourage like, people to sounds prove like a Kickstarter wrong. project, Jerry. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, I can make you an inverter today if you want. <laughs> awesome. Done it. It worked. It works. Probably costs like a hundred dollars in electricity. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you need an inverter, it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. If, right. If J cars closed and you just can't get one of those. <laughs> yeah, I just did a, a homebrew circuit board this weekend. It worked out perfectly, and uh, you know I couldn't have got a quick turn board over the weekend. So. Yeah, and that's one of the oh, yeah, situations no, we no, talked totally. about with yeah. where that's actually a very big necessity, right? Unless you have like a, a router or you have the – you did chemical etching, yeah. right, Jerry? Mm-hmm. Photo yeah. and – yeah. Yeah, I, I've been doing that for decades. It's, yeah. Yeah, it works fine. And you can go from – a you know, I can have a board ready in, in an hour or something like that. It's, you know, it's quick yeah. and easy. But, um, yeah, that's – There's a link on Hackaday about that today because there was a, a guy that – Printed directly to the circuit board. I thought that was kind of cool because you know a lot of people oh, do the toner transfer. Yeah, there, there's inkjet printing versions of them where where they put these special inks in ink. They modify an Epson inkjet printer because it uses a special type of print head which allows it to work. And uh, yeah, apparently they've had some success with that. But yeah, I, nobody's I've seen really some cracked that the... use uh, commercial ink, and there's some baking process. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, you put it in the oven and it sets hard, and then it uh, yeah. See that that's like printing onto a copper clad, right? And then you etch yep. away. I would think that if you could if you, the way that I would suggest doing it if if there ever was a Kickstarter project would be to modify a print head so that it actually printed conduction layers or like a conduction layer, which it's, would be really hard. It's because, difficult because I've tried yeah. this. I've tried using both the um HP and the Epson piezo um, print heads and they plug up very very easy. I tried to, oh, yeah. to run this very thin dopant through, um, mm-hmm. which I've been using the semiconductor stuff, and it just plugs up almost instantly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like almost you need a whole it's, new yeah. printing topology, right? Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Um, there is some some research with dip and I, I don't know the exact name, but it's pretty much like a, a quill and ink ink, so it, it dips in and then it'll drag it onto your work surface. Really? Yeah. I've seen oh, one. right. Okay. Yeah, I've nice. seen one like that before, like where it prints yeah. resistors. I've seen that kind of thing before. But mm-hmm. yeah. that was very large feature size still, so I don't know if that would be available for really tiny kind of things. But I would think that would be the way to start, too. I mean, either try and mm-hmm. raster it across where it's actually using a pen, or you yeah. try and print actual layers like a regular inkjet or laser jet would do it. So, But then regardless of the process, you come down to the same points as that, well... That's great for single sided and maybe double sided if you can flip it over and you can get the registration right, uh, which is a problem in itself when you flip the board over. Well, then how do you do your plated through holes and, you know, how do you do your drilling? You still have to drill the damn things by hand and, you know, oh, it's just, yeah. It's great for those little one off things that work well on a single sided or a coarse double sided board or something, but. Mm. Yeah, I know. If you're trying to do a real bore, a real double-sided bore with lots of vias on it and stuff like that, it's just I've, yeah, I've always pain wanted to ass. try to do 3D printing, um, but with conductive layers. So right, yeah. So you you would there yeah. are some 3D printers that use a powder that's sintered after the fact, huh. and uh, if you could deposit a yeah. conductive layer, I could see some interesting things you could do where you could. Build up the vias from the the bottom to the top side. From the even, bottom to the top, yeah. You could even have pockets for surface mount components. You could stop the process halfway through and drop them in, and then yep. keep building up. 
Huh. Unfortunately, yeah, there's a problem where then you've got to solder it and uh, or solder it. Sorry <laughs> for you <laughs> yanks out there. Solder. Solder. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got to solder it so well usually I don't think the 3D printing uh, I don't know what temperature do they melt at the 3D the typical 3D printing uh, plastic material polymer I don't know Is it, I don't, I don't anyone know anyone know no, no? no. Yeah. okay but yeah it'd have to be like you know 500 degrees or something like that otherwise yeah you solder them and your board falls apart oops yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be Mm. There, didn't they? There was someone who was working on transistors with with a with a MakerBot or a RepRap or something, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, yeah, I remember something like that. Yeah, here it is. I don't know what became of it, but I think it's still it's in the works. University project. Yeah. So Matt Metz posted it on Make. Uh, who was it? John Ser- uh, Mr. Kim and John Sarek. That's right. I so got they a actually, shout out in that. Right. Yeah, you did. And so that's oh, actually awesome. that's a that's a good start. I mean, that's they were large large feature size transistors. Where they kind of layered them together, but you know what the microwave guys really have it have um, some really cool processes down these ceramic substrates that are yeah are yeah. centered and they have different conductive layers that are I forget the name of it, but it's kind of laid down in in sheets. Mm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that might be a good way to to look at it. Right. Mm. I can't believe I, Dave well, hasn't objected in the meantime. I mean. No, on, Dave. no, not at all. I totally encourage. I totally <laughs> encourage all this. I just know it's not going to happen in the home, and it's not going to be a revolution, which is your original claim, which you tried to weasel out of, Chris. Uh, nope. <laughs> ah. Oh dear, oh dear. I don't know. Well, you'll anyway, have to have me back I think on when I make, up, guys. When I make the revolution happen. All right. I'll humbly eat my words, and then you'll fly to the U.S. <laughs> and then I'll fly to the U.S. Absolutely. Hanging out in Ohio. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> it's all happening in, in Ohio. That's Cleveland, right. in Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> it's where the hey, action is. This Wednesday, I'm heading out your direction, Chris. Uh, there's oh, yeah? the Midwest Gaming Classic. I don't know how close oh, it yeah. is to you. No, that's pretty far still. Oh. Midwest is pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a long drive to the middle. Fixin' two, go to the Midwest Classic. Fixin' two, yeah. <laughs> That's not Madison, right, or something like that? Something like that. I don't yeah. even know. I've the plane tickets. Just but I don't hop remember. on a plane. It might yeah, show up to the right plot there. spot. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You can't really do that here. You know, you hop on a plane. There's only a couple of points you can go to. You yeah. Know, because most of the center of Australia is just nothing. Right. Really. Yep. That's why it's called the outback. You know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, our amp hours up. I'm afraid. It is. Our first guest... And we guest... covered absolutely nothing. Oh, please. We got <laughs> through 15 points on the sheet. That's way better than usual. Did we? Oh, no way. Oh, yeah. That is... How did we do that? It's all With because Jerry of me. on board as well. Yep, I oh. guess so. Taking all the claim. It's because she's a race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep right. moving. You got to yep, keep that's... steering and giving input. There you go. <laughs> well, it's been fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, thanks for com- nice coming on the had. show. Thank you very much, Jerry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, we'll maybe talk about having another guest in the future too, right, Dave? Awesome. Yeah, I think this has worked. Um, we were a bit, um, we were worried about how three people talking over each other would work, but uh, I haven't heard back the finished result. But yeah, we talked over each I other really well. I think. Yeah, I think it. Uh, <laughs> I think it worked just fine. So you could see more uh, threesomes in the future. Uh, put your swords. <laughs> Nobody's right. going there, are they? No. All right. Okay, I, that has to be the name for today's no, amp hour, no, surely. No. The threesome theoretical. I'm just cutting out this last two minutes right here. Just not, not even going to show up on the recording. <laughs> what, what is the phrase? Terrible threesome or something? Or it's terrible twosome for kids terrible that are twosome. growing up. There's oh, got to be a right, threesome okay. one. Fearsome it's, threesome. I just think we'll come up with something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, Chris! Should I stop recording? Are we done? <laughs> no, we're not done. Well, I guess so. No, we're no, we're not done. We got to say goodbye. I guess this last yep minute. All right, all right. Thanks, so, Jerry. All right, <laughs> bye, guys. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>